What's up, everybody? It's the After Show, but later. It's your boys, D and El Kukui. And today we are joined by the one and only Steve Covino, the reason why this show exists. So I'm stoked. El Kukui, how do we like to get this show started every day? Bring a baseline tray. We bring in baseline tray. Let's go. On the road to the riches, because it's all about the paper. Now buckle up your seats and prepare for the journey. Let the music ease your soul. Grab a spliff and start burning. Uh, relax with us and take a trip to the heavens. And come and spend the day in the 757. Here we go. What's up, everybody? It's the after show, but later, the only unofficial Covino and Rich after show in the history of Earth. I heard there was another after show in the works, but I haven't seen anything. So I don't know what I don't know what's going on with them. But today we are here for episode number 200. We've been doing this since like November of 2018. So we, we, wait a we, second. This is episode. That's a big milestone. So this is 200 official. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you, bro. bro. And I don't want to interrupt the flow, but Go I do want to say it's an honor, bro. And I'm humbled, you know, and, and and happy and honored that you guys even have an after show about our silly show. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You guys do a great job. I listen all the time. I appreciate your support. And I love your take, your hood rat take on the shit, the vato take on what we talk about every day, man. So I just want to thank you guys for having me and your 200 episodes of Kick-Ass, bro. Props to you, man. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate thank it. You, and I actually had a question about that hood rat take. So let's go ahead yeah, and get yeah. right into that. Yeah. You say the hood rat version of Camino and Rich. And we, you know what? Actually, wh where do I have this shit over here? I actually have some stuff where Covino, let me see, soundbite. He's a little b <laughs> so you, you, that's, a real, that's better sound bites than we got well i remember when you were talking about the show one day you're like yeah. rich 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 you're like he's like rich say something about like justin bieber and then rich was like uh yeah you know so justin bieber and then you're like justin bieber <laughs> and then you you said the same shit about rich you're like yeah i heard this full rich talking and rich he's a little uh, you know, yeah. I can tell you what I mean by that. Like, I'm going to give a shout out to another podcast, if that's cool. My buddy, oh, yeah. Al B. Al B., we go back to the mid-90s, late 90s. We worked at K-Rock together, Al B. He was a, a mashup mixer. We worked in promotions together. We both wanted to be on the air. We were on our grind, like a real, real serious grind. First to be there, last to leave. Like, we just worked so long, so hard in radio together, right? And uh, now he does our videos for our Patreon. So he's the guy that takes all of our clips from Patreon and edits them. And he still works in radio. He's a production wizard. And he has a podcast called Your News, Our Take. Him yeah. and this guy, Radimus Prime. So Al B and Rad, right? And they're two Hispanic dudes, like two Puerto Rican guys. And they're very hood in their delivery in their street. But very just New York kids, you know, New York guys. Um, and they're like Covino and Rich, but like, I always said like the, the, the urban version. When I heard you guys, you would take we would talk about and I would say, oh, that's the hood rat spin on what we do. But I, I honestly, I say that uh, respectfully. Now, 100%. I would roll with you guys. You got to remember, I do the show with Rich and Spot. I'm not saying I'm from the streets. I'm not saying that I did hood rat shit. But I grew up with a lot of people that I think you guys would vibe with. When I met Rich yeah. and Spot, I really didn't know guys like that, really. Like I never yeah. met guys like that. So the show is very different because it's me and two completely different guys, right? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So your your show and, and my buddy Al's show is very similar with just different flavors. You know what? Right. It, it's cool that you say that because I, I feel very similar. I didn't grow up hood. My parents were together till my dad passed away. I had a very traditional, normal American life, right? But growing up with the cousins and the friends and all that shit, I grew up around it. And so it's funny because one of the last episodes, El, El Kukui asked me, he's like, hey, he goes, so in your family, because we love this fool, you know, that's our favorite show. Yeah, I so love that show. He asked me, he's like, hey, who in your family is Julio? And I'm like, dog, that's me. I'm like, <laughs> I like boy bands, dog. I like corny <laughs> music. I posted a picture today on the Carl page of me holding a Barney when I'm like six. I'm like, oh. I, I, I don't want to be the Julio. I want to be the Luis. But if All I'm right. being real, it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is. It's just like your show is is a lot like what we do. 
just a little spicier. I try to add as much spice as I can, but yeah. I'm not even really that spicy myself. But I, you know, I have more spice than Rich and Spot. So that's why I say that about you guys. You know what I mean? Like, and I hear El Kukui, El Kukui, man, he's more Mexican than I am, right? I hear El Kukui, he's talking about washing and shit. You know how he rolls. So, you know, I, I, that's why I say what I say. Hey, yeah. you, you want to hear something funny, bros? I was listening yeah. to the, uh, the podcast, the new one, right? Yeah. And um, and I also had over promise. Do you mean the one streaming everywhere? Yes. Okay. Well, check it out. So I had one on pause, and I and I had the morning show on pause, but it's two different platforms, right? It's your podcast yeah. uh, app, and then it's the Patreon app. So yeah. I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it, right? And it's the Fox Sports one. And then Spot starts talking about Nantucket and fuck it, and I was like, bro, is he saying that on Fox? Because it kicked onto oh. the other. One. So no. I tripped out, bro. I was like, wow, because I knew you guys were filling in for the herd. Yeah, you know, that's one of the it's kind of a minor challenge because we're really good at that shit, dude. Like we wear two different hats. You know, when we're on Patreon, I'm wearing my my fitted hat right here, bro, that I'm that I'm rocking. When we're on Fox Sports, it's like you gotta be on point. You can't say certain things. And you know, we've been trained to to operate in that way from back in the day when we were on SNY, you know. When you were on Sirius XM, everything was uncensored. You could say whatever you want, do whatever you want. And then when you went to SNY, you had to zip up. So we learned, you know, over 10 years ago to wear that different hat and know how to do it. And Rich was always great at it anyway, because he was doing pop shit. You couldn't yeah. be that way on pop radio. Uh, yeah. So he was always very buttoned up and proper when he had to be. So, yeah, we're pretty good at at knowing where we can go on Patreon and knowing when to... You know, push the envelope, but just don't cross the line on terrestrial radio because FCC still matters and you can't just say that shit. And you don't know if kids are listening and families are there, but yeah, you can't say stuff like that. But Rich is really risque with that shit. He's really risky. He talks a lot of sexual innuendo. Yeah, he's really, he pushes it on Fox, but his thinking behind that is, well, we got to differentiate ourselves. We got to stand out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good, they're good shows. I mean, even that podcast. Blabber lips, Davis. Oh, that's great. Blubber lips, Davis. Blubber lips, yeah, blubber lips, bro. You know why? No. I always say Rich Davis sinks ships, bro. Like it's a gift for me because who better of a co-host to have than the guy that never shuts up, right? right. So I know that if I have nothing to say, he's always got something. Always. <laughs> Cheers to you. Thank you. Cheers to you, bro. Uh, you know what? I poured myself a drink. I rarely, I rarely drink. But um, I, I poured myself a drink tonight because I was like, I know both of these fools are going to have a drink. So You know what? I haven't even started yet, bro. But look, I'm, all, I'm prepared, man. I'm ready to go. I've got my maker's mark. I'm loyal like that, too, because, look, there's plenty of whiskey brands, but they right. welcomed us. They welcomed our show years ago. We did a live broadcast in Kentucky from right. Maker's Mark, and it was so cool, man. Like, yo, I got to show my loyalty, man. Absolutely. And, a, I'm and a Carl makes these mixers, too. Be friendly, bro. A little oh, uh, old-fashioned mixer, dude. So, look at this one. Oh, you just pour like one per shot, or what? You just yeah, you, you pour your drink right, and then uh -huh. you just add this maple citrus old-fashioned pre-made mixers. There's jalapeno ones and shit. It's called oh, Be dope. Friendly. So yeah, man. Oh, look, yeah. we built a cool community of, of friends and listeners, as you guys know. You've been a part of it for man over a decade, right? So you meet people along the way. They support you. You got to support them. So. I try to stay true as, as much as I can. So props to them, props to you guys. That's why I'm here, man. Supporting you guys. Hey, we appreciate you, dude. Hey, I was I got a question for you. Uh, True. We were talking last week, I think, uh, last show about uh, the Maxim channel and the yeah. shows that I actually used to like the Stretch Armstrong show. And then uh, what was it? Devore and Diana. If you remember, yeah, there was a bunch. It was Bauer, um, Evan and Brian. Devore yeah. and Diana. Um, I remember Scooter was part of Bauer's show. There was a whole bunch of people involved. Um, Cocktails with Patrick was on the Cosmo channel, but he was also mm -hmm. part of Maxim early, early on. Patrick Mayer, Meager, Mayher. Um, but it was a great, you know what it was? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It was way ahead of its time, and it was a hybrid channel. It was a lifestyle channel. But it was it was about sports. It was about music. It was a little bit about everything, man. It was it was a great great time, and it gave us a great opportunity to learn the craft of talk radio. You know, and those Madden parties were dope. I still remember those Madden parties, dude. I remember those Madden parties too. <laughs> Madden Park, <laughs> Madden, Maxim, Playboy, Penthouse. Like it gave us access to 
all the cool shit that that you'd want to be a part of back in those early 2000s, right? So it opened so many cool doors for us. And like one of these days, honestly, we got to write a book or or create oh, yeah. a docu series or a documentary about you know the last of those days. This is the end of like terrestrial when it was the biggest thing going because terrestrial is coming back. And of course, the beginning of satellite, and this is pre Howard, so we were the we were one of the premier guy talk shows in the early 2000s, courtesy of Maxim. We had that brand behind us. And what, what's crazy is I think Stretch used to call you guys like the Velvet Foxes or the Velvet Wolves or something, didn't he? No, you know what's funny? Uh, John DeVore of uh-huh. DeVore and Diana, he's a Vato local forever, too. He's a studious Vato. But uh, okay. he, uh, he would call Rich the Velvet Wolf, which implied, okay. like, this guy puts up a, a, a very sweet front. But I know right. what he's all about. Like I see through you. He's a wolf in sheep clothing, is what he was implying. But we all got along. He 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 said it in a fun way. He called right. uh, he called Rich the Velvet Wolf. Stretch, on the other hand, it was kind of weird. Stretch, we had a weird relationship with him. He did a great show, right? He did the Mantertainment Report yeah. and all that That's shit, right? Yeah. Stretch, Stretch in Hollywood. And my ex was actually a part of his show at one point, if you remember. Oh shit! She was originally on our show as a reoccurring guest, because she was in Maxim, and Maxim was British-owned. That's how I met her, my ex-wife. Right. Um, but then later on, like, she wasn't a part of our show, because that would be awkward. Like, she would be on. But then right. she became a part of Stretch's show, like, on a reoccurring segment uh, toward the end of his show. And then he went on air. Again, this is, like, ancient history, bro. But right. from what I remember, he we thought we were cool with him. And he, he was, like, clowning us on the Ellis show or something like that. Uh, we're like, oh, okay. wait a second. He was their producer, right? Didn't he produce over there for yeah. a little bit? Yeah, and it's like, wait, we thought we were cool. And here right. he was, he, sort of like um, like coming at us in a cheap way a little bit. And I'm sure it was all in fun. That's just how I took it back then. So that was it. Really never uh, crossed paths again after that. Because, yeah, then he started producing that show. And I don't even know what happened. But, look, they were all really talented, man. All those shows were all really good. We were we we're happy to be a part of it and, and happy to survive. be the last one standing and survive. Yep. Yeah, that's really it. I, me- I remember that. I remember when they shut the channel down and you guys like, we survived it. You guys were the, the last show. You know why, though? Because we were doing Maxim Radio, but that was the style of radio and the brand that we would have been doing anyway. They hired right. me at Maxim because that's the shit I was about anyway. It's not mm-hmm. like I was some dude trying to do Maxim. I was already that dude. So right. and then you just did. Continued. They, they yeah. threw you guys to Indy and Rush and Indy yeah. Two and Stars Two and every channel possible. And you know yeah. it was funny was though. Powerful. I don't know if you guys. I don't know if yeah. you guys took it like this, but when you guys were moving channels, I was kind of stoked for a while because they put you on like Indy One Hundred Two or Stars Two or some shit. And I was like, all right, that's like the next channel after Howard and Howard One Hundred One. So I was like, maybe they'll get some traction from there. Cause that's how I found you guys was because of Howard. So I was, I had listened already and I was going through like just scrolling through the channels. You guys were one of the next channels. And it was actually when you guys were bagging on spot for his Tuesday story. (laughs) And I was like, oh shit. So that was kind of what hooked me. That was a completely different guy looking back. I mean, that was all, you mean old spot. Old spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, I'll tell you, man, um, we were bounced around a lot. We never had that fit that was quite the same as Maxim after that until now at Fox Sports. And Rich and I still talk about it. I think sometimes what makes us great also holds us back a little bit. Like, we're good at what we do. We're radio guys at heart, right? So we're content creators creating radio and creating some fun content. But we're we're also very silly. And sometimes when we're, when we're goofy like that, people don't take you serious. Right. Right. So it's like, oh, these guys are good at what they do, but they're clowns. So that's what sort of works against us sometimes. But if they ever needed someone to do a kick ass broadcast, we're the guys. If they needed right. someone to rely on, we're the guys. If they wanted someone to do a, a, an interview and know it's going to come out good and be personable and represent well, we were the guys. But we were always so willing, always so friendly and even goofy at, the, at times. Maybe we didn't garner the respect we sort of deserved at the time, but all in due time, because you fast forward now, it's all starting to come together finally, you know, but it's been a long run, a long journey, but a fun one. So 
I think being the goofy guys and fun and kind of hurt us as much as it helped us. You know what though? Maybe though, because all those older, the older like executives are dying off now. Yeah. And that humor is more receptive, obviously in our generation, but even the yep. younger generations with comedy, because comedy's grown too. F-ing a million comedians now. And back in the day, there, there was a select few. And yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think you you're, you have a bigger audience now because you know all those old guys, they were just all set in their ways, like they had a stick up their ass. Exactly, like um, you know, we we would talk with a different slang. Remember, we made up all our words and our terminology in the early two thousands. Imagine an older executive listen. Oh, the dude bros. We never even said dude bros, but I'm just saying like right. they would look at us like, oh, the guys that say all those stupid words and everything. It's like, but the we were doing hunter. great radio. Yeah, but we were doing good radio. It was but the dope. people that the people that were making those decisions never took it serious. I mean, serious enough to keep us around and keep paying us. But it's right. also because we had great support and we had people that liked it. Right. So. It's not a complaint. It's just how it was. And now, like you said, fast forward, all the dudes making those decisions are people that get it and people that appreciate it. And it all worked out anyway. So it's all good. So, you know, that's why I take a lot of pride in still keeping it kind of fresh and and young and not pretending like we're the old guys because, you know, we're still trying to have fun. You know, we're not trying to be all buttoned up and serious. That's never who we were. Right. I actually have a question for you, Kavino. So El Kukui, like I'm kind of, I'm very like, I get down with all kinds of music, right? So every style of music from metal to pop to country to classical music. When I first started playing guitar when I was a kid, I said, Are you I saying you're, to- you're a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll? Is that what's going <laughs> I think on? I am. Yeah. And well, El Kukui is a country very, role, bro. <laughs> he's El Kukui is very, and, um, very northern california and hip hop i besides like maybe e40 or somebody that comes from there like that were you influenced by any people like that cuz i know your shit's kind of all over the place too and even if you don't like them too much you have a good you have a good um kind of overall grasp on everything so around that time were you ever into any of those like northern california rappers from like the bay area or no um, it depends, man. Most of my West Coast knowledge and West Coast hip hop was a lot of the straight out of Compton rap. You know what I mean? The mm-hmm. Dr. Dre's, the Snoop Dogg's, the Easy E's. That was sort of my shit, if anything. I didn't even roll with Tupac that hard. That wasn't even my thing. You know, I have my select artists that I like. West Coast. You know why though, bro? I'll tell you what, because we had so much East Coast hip hop. We had so much great East Coast mm-hmm. shit. Like my West Coast was limited, but the West Coast I like, I was really into. I mean, we had LL Cool J, right? Loved LL Cool J, bro. Mm-hmm. The Beastie yeah, Boys, Run DMC, straight out of uh, the slums of Shaolin, Wu Tang Clan, mm-hmm. Mob Deep, A Tribe Called Quest. So, like, Biggie Smalls, Jay Z, like, dude, it went on and on and on as far as East Coast shit that influenced me, right? And they're talking Red Man from Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. So, all these dudes were right there. So when it came to the West Coast, the only stuff that got to me was the real mainstream stuff. So I can't front on that. Later on, I discovered, you know, more and more hip hop. And like you said, Northern California, maybe San Francisco based hip hop and stuff like that. But, you know, most of the stuff that I was into, I'm trying to think if there was anyone else that really stood out to me back then. It was mostly the NWA sort of scene, that kind of scene. You know, I even liked some Warren G, bro. Nobody liked Warren G. I liked Warren G. Yeah. Nate Dogg, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Warren G was a little soft, but I I thought he was I him too. I, I remember they couldn't, but they can't take regulator from him. Nah, hell no. Um, no, but and I was kind of the opposite. The New York in shit. I, it took me a while to kind of get into that because That's we're why. so West Coast. I was I'm in Arizona. A lot of my cousins are from LA, so we were we were influenced by all of this shit, and I missed out. I know some of the shit that Kukui like the Mac Dre's the. Um, Brother Lynch hung and all them. Dude, and- I hear the shit that El Kukui references all the time, and I'm like, damn, he goes deep. I hear mm-hmm. the shit you guys reference, and I know that you were influenced by completely different shit. And I get like maybe 70, 80% of the references, but I'm like, damn, man, he goes hard because it was a different influence, a different scene. And no, and there's shit that I 
as a kid that I get. And sometimes he goes deep for even me where I'm like, and he's like, wait, yeah. you don't with whoever. And I'm like, nah, I never even heard of them. I listen, bro. I, I hear you guys and, and he'll drop some random line and you'll be like, nah, I don't even know that shit. And he's like, you don't know that shit. I trust me, man. I've, I've heard you guys go back and forth on that before. It's just how it was, man. Remember, look, the world was a lot, uh, a much bigger place back then. So if they were playing some shit out here, that, that didn't mean they were playing it right. on the East Coast. And, and you may have had yeah. a mixtape of some shit then that we weren't getting in New York, you know? So it's just how it was. But yeah, I think- I, I'm glad you brought that up, though, because I, I do, you know, doing the show with Rich and Spot, you can only open things up so much where you know it's going to work. Like, I can't really talk boxing that much because I know they're not yeah, into yeah. it. So when it comes to hip hop, I, I really have no one to talk to, you know, yeah. all this shit about. So I'm glad you brought it up because I do love that stuff as much as I love 90s rock, you know, because it was so impactful, bro. And it wasn't. It made you feel I'm a little kid from the suburbs and it made you feel hard, you know, and that was it did. cool. It, it did. No, like it did. I there was even bands like there's even bands like there's a band named Atmosphere that I dig. They're white boys. One makes beats. The other one raps. And but they're more underground. And and it's shit like that that I feel like you can't. I mean, if it's not on the radio, I feel like Rich isn't gonna know about it. You know what I'm saying? And and some shit like it's one of our one of our biggest disagreements. It, it's it's we, so like well, there's so much shit. Like um, one of the things I dig like if I dig something, I don't give a if it's on TV or not. So like comedy, I love comedy. So one of my favorite shows is Kill Tony, right? They give these people a minute to come and do stand up. Some of these motherfuckers, it's their first time doing stand-up, and they're making you laugh your ass off, and you're like, the same thing with music. If I find a band, I don't give a There's a song that I bumped that one of my homies made, and it's called, uh, like, it's called, like, 99 Bottles or some shit, or some, some, I forget what the it's called. That shit, kid, that kiss. I had a little get-together at my pad, and I was bumping it, and somebody asked me, and this lives in an apartment building near my pad. So I was like, oh, you know, that's him yeah. Maz from uh 303 upstairs yeah, yeah you know no shit. That, that's how that's how younger dudes roll i mean you're younger than me i mean i see even my my kids friends that's how they roll they it's just they find some shit they like it they bump it and they play it and they, it doesn't matter where it came from or who it is you know right people now and clearly you and and me too because i was a music kid you sought out music you searched for what you like and you got mm-hmm. it However, however you got it illegally, you bought it or whatever. And now you know, there's just, yeah, there's more yeah, Columbia house. There's <laughs> just more to choose from, you know, but like that is the major difference between me and rich. I would seek out music, right? You'd go to the CD store oh, yeah. and you'd, you'd even put headphones on. If you, if you didn't, mm-hmm. if you wanted to make sure you listen to that shit and you bought yeah. it. And once you bought that shit and invested in that music, you know you gave it more of a shot and you knew more than just the single. Right. That, yeah. That's the difference, right? So that's the difference between a, a guy like, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that was the life I lived. And that's why I knew more deeper cuts and deeper tracks than what was just on the radio, you know? You know what? Right. I, I have a so question real quick because you know. when it comes to boxing, I know you I'm know boys, cheers, business. Man. Oh, oh, cheers, man. Yeah, cheers. I, I got my little shit right here too. You got me drinking on a Thursday night. I got to wake up early for Cowherd, bro. I'm having to drink Uh, with you guys. (laughs) Um, I'll be up with you. I'll be listening. Nice. Well, well, I I appreciate, again, you know, I appreciate you being here, man. I I really do. It's such an honor to have you here on episode number 200. (laughs) (laughs) But no, I wanted to ask you, uh, when it, I'm always kind of like thrown off when it comes to you, because I know you like boxing, UFC, everything, and just combat sports in general. When it comes to UFC, how deep do you with it? Because, like, I heard you talking about Sean O'Malley, and you're like, this fucker is a household name, and and then you start talking about like Francis and Ganu and gonna fight um, Tyson, and you're Tyson. like, I- I'm thinking about all this shit, and I'm like, because me, I- I'm I think a little bit obsessed when it comes to UFC. Like, I'll every fight night on Saturday. You know, um, this past Saturday I was watching um and um. Oh, the- his name I, i'm i'm blanking but i watched the they're in singapore right so i i think they're in singapore i was watching a fight at 7 45 in the morning 
you know? And so if it's on, I'm watching it, bro. It's kind of hard to know all the schedules, but if I, if it's on, I'm always watching it. So you say, how deep do I go? I got, I got a little story for you, man. Yeah. So when this shit first started to happen, bro, I was so into combat Max sports Holloway. as it was. Max Holloway fought. So I was so into combat sports just as a kid from watching boxing when tough man competition started and, you know, Butterbean was fighting this guy. There was, yeah. there was like four people fighting each other the same night. Like they would hold all these stupid competitions and they were pay-per-views. I would ask my dad to get them and they would get them for me, right? Cool. Then UFC became a thing, but it was so early on that mm -hmm. it was the judo dude versus the taekwondo yeah. guy. That's what yep. UFC was. It was the sumo yeah. versus the wrestler, right? Regular wrestler versus the sumo wrestler. Uh, yeah. It was uh, this guy who knows um, Gracie Jiu Jitsu versus. It'd be Hoist Gracie yeah. versus Ken Shamrock. Yeah. Versus <laughs> Ken Shamrock, right? Yeah. So. Dude, I was on it so early on getting every pay-per-view. Big Dan Severin fighting the Gracie brothers. Like, you name it. I watched and I had Pink them all. Abbott. Remember? Here's, I watched all of those, bro. And my parents would get them for me. So think about it. If my parents were willing to get me those pay-per-views, I was watching them from day one. Here's where I made the mistake. And where Ariel Helwani fought the opportunity. Because yeah. Ariel Helwani, who's one of the you know, main faces and broadcasters in the UFC, what or for MMA, I should say now, he was a baseball guy and he wanted to make his career as a baseball analyst, but he saw opportunity in this sport he knew nothing about, but he believed that it would grow. He believed oh, that shit. it would get bigger. So he's like, all right, well, baseball. That's, I love baseball, but I could get in on this from the ground up. Yeah, 100%. And he did. I never saw it as like, I need to get involved in that somehow. So... He f jumped in head first, and I looked at it and loved it and watched it, but my heart was still like, I love boxing more. You know, so I sort of blew it. I should have had the foresight that Ariel did, but that's what makes him great, and that's why he does what he does. I've always been a fan, but it's always been second to boxing. That doesn't mean I don't love it, because if we rank my favorite sports, it's probably baseball, boxing, mixed martial arts. You know, yeah. like I love UFC. I do. Um I'm not as deep or crazy about it now as you are probably because my focus is more boxing. But if it's on, dude, I'm watching it. If it's a major pay-per-view, I'm watching it. You know, uh, Chris Weidman fought last week. And that was an undercard. I, You know, that was the Sugar Strong yeah. O'Malley undercard, right? right? Yeah, I'm watching it. So, and that dude's an East Coast guy. I'm like, let's see him. Let's see what he has. Dude, I never even got a chance to talk about that. Oh, you I'm know talking what? about you... it here for the, I'm talking about it here for the first time. Chris Weidman. <laughs> Lost. I was rooting for him to win. It would have been a nice comeback. And they they went after that leg, man. They were going after it. Big At time first, too. he was trying to be a little, a little. He was kind of careful, and then he was like, "I'm going to chop this leg up." And then yeah. you saw Weidman, and you almost cringed and felt sorry for him. You were like, "Chop oh, it up!" Oh, I felt, was, felt like it was going to break again. I was like, "Please don't do this shit," you know. It was tough, but you know, you also bring up my frustrations too. It's like. You know, if Rich has an interesting thought on, on the NFL, and I know he watches closely, I'm not going to really challenge him, not because uh, I don't have an opinion, because, all right, man, I, I trust your opinion on this. Cool. If I'm saying, you know, this Sugar Sean O'Malley fight was awesome, how do you not know? How are you sleeping on this? You don't know who he is, and then you're undermining, like, his importance or his career or that anyone cares. I want to strangle somebody in that moment yeah. because no one's trusting my judgment here when right. everybody who follows the sport knows he's one of the biggest rock stars of the game right now. But, right. you know, mm -hmm. that, that's my battle in trying to promote these things and people try to downplay and not just rich and spot. You know, a lot of the people that I'm talking to, like, never heard of them. I'm like, then you're an idiot, but take my <laughs> word for it, you know? Did right. you ever see the Hamza and um, Gilbert Burns fight? I'm sure. Yeah. I used to, I'm a big fan of Gilbert Burns. Yeah. That that yeah, was like, maybe like a year ago. I'm always ago. rooting for, I'm always rooting for guys like Gilbert. So it, it was, fucking, that was a fucking brawl. That is one that I, I, any, but, and see, that's something that I could tell you or Kakui or somebody, they'll watch it. Somebody like Rich is like, oh, I don't know. You know, well, like, dude, I watch, I mean, it's combat. It's, it's, uh, it's sport at its, at its rawest, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's really as fighting it, yeah. You're fighting for your lives. You're fighting to survive. You're fighting for your family. You know, if, once you have some sort of uh, investment in those fighters, 
being, how do you not watch? So right. I watch any fight and see and see who I I gravitate toward, you know, and then you become right. a fan and that's it. Like it's the best. You know what? I, I, I think it. one of the big things for me that really like made me feel stoked about it, Kane Velasquez is from right here in Yuma. He grew up in like San Jose or some yeah. shit, but he went to high school here. He spent a majority of his time here. He's always visiting family here, even to this day. Calvin Gastelum lived in these housing apartments, like, you know, five, 10 minutes from my house right now. And and if you watch him on The Ultimate Fighter, he goes home with his mom and I'm like, right here in the hood, you know? And yeah. it's just, I'm like, people that are coming out of this little ass city, uh, making it, and, you know, Joe Rogan's talking about them every other week. That's amazing to me, you know? It's that. They're fighting it's, cactuses, uh, bro. You, you can tackle yeah. a cactus in Arizona, bro. You can take anyone out. For sure, dude. Yo, uh, Cain Velasquez, super tough. Interviewed him. Super nice guy. But then you made me think of something else, too. Look, um, I am half Mexican, right? And you got to think about all these names you're talking about. A lot of these dudes are Latino fighters, Mexican fighters fighting to change their lives and their families' lives. And as a, as a kid who felt a little different growing up, being Mexican in New Jersey, and watching my family cheer for those people, you're going to be more invested and care a little more than the average guy, right? Like, mm -hmm. those guys made me feel cool to be Mexican. If Julio Cesar Chavez was kicking some ass, right, right. it's going to make me feel cool as a little Mexican kid. When Oscar mm -hmm. De La Hoya becomes not only – a kick ass boxer, but he's a heartthrob that makes you feel cool as a, as a, as a, as a Hispanic guy, you know? So, 100%. um, I, I think that's probably why you're a little more invested too. Why I was a little more invested and eventually you just fall in love with the sport, but yeah. I've never, Hey, I've never, never gotten the ring, dude. I've never done it. You know, I just watch, I'm a fan and that's really the extent of it. But I've been a fan since I was a little, little kid because my uncles always watched and my dad was always cool enough to, buy me the pay-per-views to watch it. And I would have my friends over, we'd watch. And that would be the same with wrestling too. So being spoiled helped me out a little bit too because it gave yeah. me a little knowledge in these things. Well, yeah. hey, so I was able to grow up with it. If you ever want to chop it up after a fight, after a pay-per-view and yeah. Rich and Spot don't, you know, they don't really give a hop on with <laughs> us. Wolf <laughs> bullshit. No, he yeah. is way Thank bigger um, boxing fan than I am. So yeah, I mean, we'll go either way. We'll at all you know i well, fuck that, with ufc too i really do i like ufc but i'm same you know it's something about the 80s and mike tyson and the ear and even lennox lewis and evander holyfield and that whole shift you know and i was captivated and de la hoya too you're right de la hoya what he did watching his rise i mean it was it was incredible and dude it, it taught me lessons like oh wait so you could be a ladies man and still be a badass and still beat ass. some ass and still what you could wear Seriously, fishnets yeah. and heels and still get all you the could, bitches you could wear high heels and people up like oh. yo you know, let's go That's okay cool, real so. quick real quick let me drop something and el kakui i swear right right here this is my final Dude, thought on this hey man i'm not going anywhere so i'm, I'm chilling jordan's working <laughs> well i just i just know. don't know how you are on time i'm good man melody's all not right. even melody's with her mom I'm, I'm chilling out hey by the way speaking of boxing the greatest float like a butterfly bro this is Super rare shot, bro. Muhammad Ali. Oh, that's just dope. There we go. Always, re yeah. always representing, bro. You got to support the greats, man. You know, and yeah. try to do that. You know yeah, what? Yeah. So let, let me go ahead. And you said could be a ladies' man and still pull up and this and this, right? That is something that there's no secret about my love of pop music, right? So that's <laughs> one thing growing up as like a 10-year-old kid. El Kakui, you knew I was going to fit the shit in. Uh, there was, as like a 10 year old kid, right? You start liking chicks and shit, whatever. Me, I was like, oh, these dudes are getting all the chicks, right? So I thought they were cool. I didn't know until a few years later, right? When my friends were like, hey, that shit's corny. You like that shit? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> but, 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 like but, what? Hold on. But you I know? have a question for you. And I'm you, like, dude. wait, what do you mean, dog? They're getting, have That's you funny. seen Nick Carter's but, girlfriend? Britney Spears is with Justin Timberlake. He's the man and they're right. like bro and i was like no nah, i'm just around you know you just solved the riddle for me what's up because i didn't want the chicks that listen to pop music i didn't want karens and the blonde haired blue i like the I, didn't loca give a I just thought they were bad That's, i didn't care because hey because the loca chick in the neighborhood was not bumping that shit you want the little thin chola eyebrows, bro? Yeah, with roller. the Sharpie. She did with nah, Sharpie. She wasn't yeah, playing that just, shit. She'll steal she your was bumpy little one. in the middle of the night, bro. Hey, I want her to steal my whistle. 
<laughs> there's funny Mr. Little, little One, Little Rob, Night Owl, and Diablo. She was they were them. bumping. Hey, I was too. That, hey, they were bumping lighter shade of brown, bro. All right, there we go. Right, grooving on a Sunday out. afternoon. Right? Yeah, I love that, it. That's where my corny shit started. So I thought it was cool until I learned it wasn't cool. You know, then I was like, well, oh. You know, uh, Bon Jovi tells a very similar story. They say, hey, man, we could have been ACDC. We could have been ACDC, but guess what? I didn't want to perform in front of 90,000 ugly dudes. Bald dudes with long yeah, hair. A bunch yeah. of rocking mongrels. He's like, I wanted to perform for the girls. We did it for the chicks. Like, you know, it's just part of it. Hey, you like what you like. It doesn't matter, man. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's cool to like some cool things once in a while, you know? For sure. Yeah, no, and I like that shit too. One time you made a ball in a biscuit fucking reference and I texted you or something about it. And you're like, bro, oh, you caught stripes. that? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, cool shit too. Not just corny shit. So don't <laughs> get me wrong. Yeah. 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 Hey. hey, everybody has their corny shit. That's, that's just the fact. Everybody hey, spe- corny speaking shit. of corny shit, I want to know how Rich yeah. Davis gets away with saying shit like this. Tell me if you guys hear this. Sarah's mom is a bigger woman because she doesn't eat. He's out of his mind. That shit is wild, dude. I don't how know. How the f- shit. Could you, you know go why? On? I'll tell you why. Spot sort of summed it up the other day nicely. He's like, yeah, it sounds to me you're a guy that never got punched in the face. Right. And I'm not saying, hey, I got punched in the face and I, you know, I, I was getting I my did. ass kicked and I learned my lesson. But you know what lines to not cross, right? Like I did yeah. learn that somewhere down the line. And I think Rich relies so much on his own belief that he's such a good dude that no one would ever take him that way. And he relies so much on his smile and his like he's a charming guy that he forgets that wolf he's saying clothing, or what'd you say or he, some shit earlier velvet wolf right velvet no but wolf. i think that he's like what do you mean how's that bad i'm rich everything i do is great so he could say some weird shit like that and be like i don't know about that like i heard that some shit, crazy shit. I, I sent it to El Kakui. i was like what did i say rich davis is a brave man yeah, yeah so, and i was Sarah's mom is a bigger woman because she doesn't oh, eat. Well, well, now well. he's talking shit on her diet, bro. Yo, imagine if I said that about Jordan's mom, dude. Yo, I, never. Yeah. Oh, never, nah. never. But, you know, hey, you got to appreciate the honesty. Uh, he keeps it real. You know, it's good for radio. So it's like, I'm not judging it. Like, he says some shit as his co-host. If it's good radio, that that always takes precedence and priority to me. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe you should have said that, but hey, it, whatever. We're doing a show. Bro, it worked. We're talking about it now. Exactly, right? So, you know, ah, I just honestly think that Rich, it's like, it's like whatever he does, let's say he steals some shit. I steal milk from the, uh, wherever he used to steal milk from. He thinks it's okay because it's him. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And I think that's sort of the thinking behind a lot of the things that he does and says. What do you mean? What's the big deal? I'm rich. It doesn't matter. I'm recording, bro. <laughs> oh. <What's that? laughs> my Who's daughter's right here. Man? My daughter's right here in her underwear. She's like, nice. I want to do something fun. Do you want to peek your head? Cover yourself and you can say hi to Kavino. Yeah, we can say hi. Hey, it's all good. It's a family show. Towel. It's a family okay. show. Hey, but you know what, uh, Daniel? That's, that's what in. makes us different, man. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, Kennedy. <laughs> all right, Bolo, get over there. <laughs> You're naked. What are you guys oh. doing in your underwear? That's so fun. I want to know about that. <laughs> that sounds like no. You, okay, you want to know, Kennedy? Can, oh, you can't. Real quick, we. She's like, she calls us Choni's homies whenever we kick it in our drawers. So she's like, Chony's Daddy. Homies. She gets home and she's like, she'll be like, Why are you wearing your clothes? I thought we we're gonna be Choni's homies. And I'll be like, Oh, fuck, right. You know. <laughs> That's crazy, so, bro. so hey, Cavino, I got a question for you. Let's go. Have you have you ever thought about where some of the listeners might be playing your show? So yeah, and- that's so cool, man. When you think about stuff like that, you know, I try not to think about shit like that. Like I'll give you an example. You know, it's interesting to me, right? It is. It's really interesting. It's what I do. It's what I love, right? Um, like think about it. You guys love doing your podcast. I love this so much. I said I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. So I love it right. like next level. So I think about those things, but if I think too much. Like if I thought about, I'm going to be on Colin Cowherd's show today. I'm filling in for Colin Cowherd. I'm going to be right. in this little studio, but really millions of people are going to be listening. And most of those people are going to be like, who the f*** are these guys? They better make me laugh or I'm changing the channel. 
And those are millions of people in their car all over the country. We're talking about I'm filling in for one of the biggest dudes in sports, the most impactful names in sports. It's like right. Stephen A and Colin, right? Right. So if I really thought about that, I try I'd psych myself out. So right. I like to like pretend a little bit, keep my head in the clouds, and just really try to get in the moment of I'm just chilling with Rich in this little room, man. And I'm just trying we're just trying to make each other laugh. Right. And the only time I really think about other people is if like, oh wait, someone I gotta let them in on that joke. They might not get that reference. Or I need right. to uh, bring some formatics into this and reintroduce myself because they might not know. Otherwise, it's just us in this room. And I try not to think about that too much because that's sort of an overwhelming thought, man. You know, like, yeah. is all these people John listening manager, to your stupid to shit? Fan. That's crazy, right? Like, you never know who's listening, man. You never know who's listening. Well, I, I always think about it like pilots because I know we got you got some pilot listeners, right? Friends of the show, and yeah. Like, does anyone download the show? Are they listening to it at thirty thousand feet? Like you never, yeah. you know, back in the day, I had a, a hip hop label way, way back in the day, and um, and you know, it got streams from all over the world. So I don't think our content was nearly. You guys are on, you know, Fox Sports and all kind of shit. So like. I don't know, man. I trip on that a lot. I used to listen to it on the open road. I would start the show in San Francisco and end it. You know, by the time you guys were done, I'm in Humboldt. And uh, I don't know, man. I just, I trip out on like how many people actually listen and where are they? Are they listening to the middle of the woods? Bro, I used where to be in the middle they? of the woods of Humboldt. What, we what be- are they doing, right? What are they? They might be doing some creepy shit. They might be doing some shit. Who knows? Who are they? Um, can they be impactful to my life aside from just listening? Like, dude, just recently, right, Um, some guy shot me an email and he's like, yo, dude, I listen to you every weekend on Ozzy's Boneyard. I'm on Ozzy's Boneyard twice a week. That's it. Early as fuck, Saturday and Sunday morning. It's like it's like a part time thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And he goes, and I hear you talk about 80s toys and shit all all the time because I play uh, toys in the attic from Aerosmith. So every time I play toys in the attic. I'm like, yeah, like you're an old He-Man and you're Voltron and I'll just throw some old school shit out there. He's like, yo, I want you to be part of something I'm doing. It's about old school toys. And he gave me a a big TV opportunity just because he was listening to some shit. So you never, ever know who's listening or maybe that nobody who's listening becomes that somebody. Right. You remember uh, Chris D'Elia, dude? Very famous comedian. Oh, yeah. He was was Justin Bieber's uh, favorite comedian. You know, yeah, right. Justin Bieber becomes the biggest star in the world. There could be a guy listening to us, to you, to our show. That could be someone that changes our lives for all we know. Yeah. He could be the next uh, Elon Musk. We have no clue. I used to have the serious that boombox. Remember with the 50-foot yeah. antenna? And I'd yeah. be in the middle of Humboldt Woods, bro, where there's not even cell service. And I'd have the satellite out there listening to it. <laughs> That's wild, right? Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. And that was a game changer, dude, that, uh, for for satellite radio to we had a, a figure eight satellite that went all around North America, Canada, Mexico, and it gave people the opportunity to hear us that never had a chance before. Right. And man, it opened our audience up to so many people all over the country. And that's, that's been our biggest blessing. We were able to build you that want, nationwide. You want audience. to hear some crazy shit. So this is going back to 2018. Me and Johnny hadn't recorded one episode. We came to see you guys in the studio and yeah. we walked in and we had came off the elevator or something. And you looked at us and you were like, cause I had talked to you a little bit about it and you were like, Oh, there's Johnny and D from the after show, but later, right before we had recorded one episode. So then you kind of give us a little opportunity to talk about it on your show and people from high school hitting me up. Hey, what the, I heard you on Sirius XM. Hey, what the f- right. sending me f- little screen videos of their shit. I was like, that f- tripped me the f- out. Cause like that, like, th- like you said, you can't think about that shit because I wasn't thinking about it just out of being naive. Right. But yeah, yeah that's hey, like, oh shit. I was like, Oh, f- I'll tell you what, dude, that, that feeling you describe is still one of the things that motivates me. A lot, to be honest. Like, why do you think I'm filling in for Colin Cowherd? Because I have the opportunity to hit a bunch of people that may have never heard me before, but they're listening to his show. And a lot of those people might be people like 
I, I might know, right? Oh, f***ing Cavino filling in for Colin? Meanwhile, I, I got my own show on the same platform every day. But that feeling you describe is kind of cool, you know? And I'm not saying that's the sole motivation, but it's definitely kind of cool. I would say the chick that... that- I would say the chick you never got in high school, but we all know you had the hottest chick in high school. We've heard I that did. story. I'm so I did. So, uh, you know, so I mean, it, 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 different motivations for different people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I just want people to hear the show. I want people to be aware of the show. And uh, the more people, the better. You know, and you never, ever, ever know who's listening. You never know who's watching. That's how we got on TV, too. There was, uh, you've heard this story before, but. We were interviewing Tim Tebow at a Maxim party or an EA party. It was a Super Bowl event. Right. And some some executive TV execs were there watching us interview. They were just there partying. They're like, who the are those guys? That was it. That's how we got on TV. If we hadn't gotten that opportunity, we probably wouldn't have been on ESPN. If we hadn't been on ESPN, we probably wouldn't be on Fox Sports. So well, for, yeah. for reals though, I mean, that's that's how and it's crazy to where he's went. But that's how I was on the Gary V tip way back then. And I thought he was a nerd. I'm not going to lie. He's talking about wine, web, and whatever the yeah. hell. And I was yeah. like, snooze fast. Can we get this shit out of the way? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was on the channel. But now look at him. He just, he's like, Rich, he can't shut up. And it makes some money, though. It's so funny. Uh, Rich blames me. If you want to know what Rich is blaming on Covino, make sure you check out part two of this interview coming out later this week. If you're watching here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you're listening on any of the audio streaming platforms, make sure you hit follow, subscribe, or whatever they're telling you to do these days. Check out part two coming out later this week, episode number 201. Stay tuned. On the road to the riches, cause it's all about the paper. Now buckle up your seats and prepare for the journey. Let the music ease your soul, grab a spliff and start burning. Uh, relax with us and take a trip to the heavens. And come and spend a day in the 757.